look, we're here. And we're going to go down here, over here to the we're chapel gonna go. and summit. We're, we're, gonna <laughs> <go>. <laughs> we're here. We're here. We're going to go on Grove. Okay. And we're going to go to chapel and summit, just like no. you said. You didn't marry me for my <laughs> compass point directions. <laughs> Hi, welcome to Tafatopia, where we visit cemeteries, meet fascinating previously living people, and share great stories one grave at a time. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button if you enjoy these videos. Today, we're in the Evergreen Cemetery in Portland, Maine, to share a bit about a woman who, with no mechanical training, revolutionized an industry. So let's go meet Helen Augusta Blanchard. Let's go. Helen Augusta Blanchard was born October 25th, 1840. Oh, we're near her birthday. In Portland, Maine. Her father, Nathaniel, was a prosperous and a prominent merchant. Her dad was a ship chandler. A ship chandler is someone who, who sells all the necessary supplies and provisions for a ship when it's at port so they can restock and set sail as quickly as possible. When we go past this tree... We're, we're going this way. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we well, could you could go get past there. That tree. Hang on, I gotta tie my shoe. All right, so I gotta check my mustache, my bow tie. <laughs> it looks okay. fun. Ready? Let's go. All right, we're keeping we're going. Helen. There's no formal proof that she ever received any mechanical or technical training. Right. Helen Blanchard was growing up in a time in the middle of the 19th century. There was the U.S. Civil War and Abraham Lincoln's assassination. But closer to home, there was the Great Fire of Portland, Maine in 1866. 10,000 people were made homeless. 1,800 buildings were burned to the ground. But luckily, Helen's family's home was spared. Concurrent with these events, her father suffered financial problems, mm. and eventually Helen's family was forced to put their home up for sale. It was a three-story brick home. It included the land and her father's shops, and the family continued to live in the home. What ingredient could have prompted Helen Blanchard to begin inventing? Helen Blanchard grew up in a home that was steeped in the talk of boats and rigging, and she quite probably was aware of all of the details that go into the designing and building of a ship. But, you know, here at Taftopia, <laughs> We may have discovered, well, at the Taffetopia headquarters, it's, it's, a, it's a large, imposing structure um, with, with a vast library. Um, and here, tons, of, tons of researchers. Ton, tons of, re too, we have a whole team of researchers. Too numerous to mention. We may have discovered a possible second ingredient that may have contributed to Helen's springboard into the world of designing machines. And here it is, drum roll. In 1870, her mother dies mm. and her father father decides to begin taking in borders. The 1870 U.S. Census for Portland, Maine, lists all the residents, everybody living in the Blanchard family home. Nathaniel Blanchard, whose occupation is a retired merchant. George Cram, he's not a family member, he, he's a boarder. And Mr. Cram's occupation is a bookkeeper. Louise Blanchard, Helen's sister, she's listed as a housekeeper. Helen Blanchard, and Helen doesn't With have an occupation. occupation. Yeah. And it also lists two other boarders, Charles Green and John Danforth. Charles Green and John Danforth were both civil engineers. They were working engineers. They had a practice together and they had an office in Portland. Sarah and I like to imagine that it is just possible that through meeting and in, in effect living with two civil engineers that Helen was introduced to mechanical thinking that lit up her imagination. That Helen was inspired by technological concepts and conversations at the dinner table and that her latent brilliant creativity simply needed the Sarah serendipitous meeting of two engineers. This is just a possibility. After her father dies, Helen Blanchard is no longer listed in the Portland City Directory, and eventually, at some point, the family home sells. Where did Helen Blanchard go? She moved to Boston, Massachusetts. And that's about 90 minutes south as the crow flies nowadays. <laughs> yeah. And it was then also as the crow flies. <laughs> as the crow flies. <laughs> Various sources say that Helen Blanchard was spectacular spectacularly unsuccessful at running a boarding house <laughs> in Boston. 
So she borrowed money to pay for the development and the filing fees for her very first patent. Her very first patent was for the improvement of sewing machines. This patent would introduce what we now know today as zigzag sewing. Helen didn't use the word zigzag. She called it an overstitch or a buttonhole stitch. There's a working model of her very first patent in the Smithsonian. In fact, for a long time when you had to file a patent, you had to submit a working model. You don't do that today. So there's a machine, a cute little machine at the Smithsonian that Helen submitted. I thought the zigzag stitch was invented in Germany. The zigzag stitch in Germany was most likely the moving towards making it so that it was residential machines. Oh, okay. This first patent was one of nine. Those nine patents were granted in five years complex, detailed, intricate machinery, and Helen Blanchard was just getting started. In her 40s, Helen lived mostly in Philadelphia, and the 1880 census is the very first time on any U.S. census where Helen Blanchard lists an occupation. And the occupation she lists is... Inventor? Inventor. Amazing. She lists an inventor, which is great. From 1881 to 1889, Helen ran a factory that was called the Blanchard Overseam Machine Company. So Helen was becoming wealthy and successful. Wealthy enough that Helen Blanchard could zigzag up and down the East Coast, <laughs> living in Philadelphia, New York City, Boston, and eventually she came back to Portland, Maine. And Helen's affection for her family never abated. For a few years in the Philadelphia City Directory, it lists Helen living with her sister Louise and her brother David. And speaking of family, here we are at the Blanchard family plot. Helen held 28 patents, 22 of which had to do with the improvement and efficiency of sewing machines. But keep in mind, these were not for home use. These were for industrial, uh, industrial use, right. Helen's invention made the manufacture of clothing quicker than hand sewing and it made the end product more reliable and more comfortable and more durable. Helen's 28 patents included sewing machines, split needles, securing cords to the edges of material, elastic seams, goring for shoes, attachments to crochet, and spool cases to protect the thread from dust. She also invented surgical needles, a hand-cranked pencil sharpener, and sweat bands for men's hats to protect perspiration from staining the hat. Advertisers would use Helen's name to prove that they were selling quality goods. The New York Tribune had an ad that included the phrase, the celebrated Blanchard seam underwear. Because underwear, at one point, had very uncomfortable seams. <laughs> but the Blanchard overseam machine made that so that you enjoyed wearing it. <laughs> Thanks to her wealth, Helen was eventually able to buy back the family home. Helen was so well known around the country that her rebuying her family home was news. The Elkhart Sentinel in Elkhart, Indiana. It had an article that read, Miss Helen Blanchard of Portland, Maine. She has now returned to Portland to buy back the old homestead where the family lived in their former days of prosperity. In 1916, Helen suffers a stroke at the age of 75. After her stroke, she doesn't invent any new inventions, she doesn't file any new patents, and in 1922, Helen dies in Providence, Rhode Island at the age of 82. How did Helen come to be buried in Portland if she died in Rhode Island? That's thanks to her niece, Fanny. Fanny is the daughter of Helen's other sister, Persis. Fanny signed the return of a death certificate for Helen's body to be transported back to Maine and buried here in the Evergreen Cemetery with her family. We believe that there are some clues that Helen's family was a close family. Number one, her father was a ship owner, and some of his ships had the names of a few of his children. He had a ship named Helen Augusta. He had a ship named Augustus, which is one of Helen's brothers. He had a ship named Albus, which is also one of Helen's brothers. Patent documents at that time required the names of two witnesses. A few of Helen's patent applications included the names of her sister Louise, and her niece, Fanny. 
Number three, Helen must have had fond memories of her childhood because she worked at and succeeded in repurchasing and restoring her family home. Number four, her family is buried here all together. This is her sister Louise, her mother, Phoebe, Phoebe, her father Nathaniel, her brother Augustus. This one is special because this is her brother David. This is a really great clue. They didn't put David, they put Harry. Because right. David's full name was David Henry Blanchard. As many people know, Harry is the nickname for Henry. So they put his family name, his nickname, on his gravestone. You have Helen Blanchard, and you have their brother Albus. I love this. this. The A is for Albus. Yeah. Over here is her sister Persis. Persis, what a fun name. Here's Persis's second husband, and then right behind here is Persis's first husband, and his name is Stinson. What is also remarkable about this pioneering inventor is that Helen recognized that her machines displaced workers who were no longer needed for hand sewing. And so Helen's life included philanthropic work to help the women who used to be employed as hand sewers. Mm. In 2006, Helen Blanchard was inducted into the Inventors Hall of Fame. Thanks for joining us to meet Helen Blanchard. Don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and share. Thanks everybody for joining us at Tapatopia, and we'll see you next time.